Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Sonic Love! So in today's video we're going to be checking out the new and improved Mayu Mini. Now I don't think there's going to be any internals that have been upgraded. I solely think that it's been upgraded via the battery so it's now a 2000 milliamp hour battery uh, which gets up to like maybe 5 to 6 hours worth of battery life. And not only that but then it has a fully laminated screen that's also been an upgrade as well which is meant to be a lot brighter, uh, better viewing angles, and just all in general, better screen, really. I think the it's going to be a stock firmware. I'm not too sure whether it's going to be Onion, uh, but I did have the original here, and I did try and mod it, but I bricked it, unfortunately, so what a shame. So I'm glad to have a new one with a new improved screen. I have ordered a chip for this to actually take it back to the original settings so it will be unblocked so i'll do a video on that if you want let me know in the comments if you wish to see a video of me doing that just in case you unfortunately bricked your first one yourself so it does state that it has a bigger battery life we will check that against this one uh, but yeah let's get into the video Okay, so this is the packaging. I have sliced the top open, so let's just see what we get. It comes in a nice foam, styrofoam uh, wrapping, but it looks like there is no box, and it is just a Mayu Mini case. So let's have a little look at this. There's nothing else in the box. So here is the Mayu Mini case, which is really nice, to be honest. Very solid. It's got a lovely little image and logo on there. So let's open her up. Okay, so we have our charging cable. We have our manual. And we also have our Mayu Mini. So let's get out the bag. I do love this. I think this is one of my favorite handhelds so far this year. I know it's not powerful, but I'm all about uh, playing the games, retro games on the go. And this is just an absolute joy. So uh, as a little comparison, uh, let's take this off because I bloody hate that one. Let's take that off. So I don't think there is any difference whatsoever in the actual unit itself. We still have our SD card, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, SD card slot, charger cable. We still have our ABXY buttons. Yeah, very, yeah, it's just the same. D pad's really nice on this as well, guys, if you haven't uh, had it anyway. Now, I can't really see anything about the screen bar. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's darker. You can see the screen itself. I don't know if you can see that. But the screen is a lot darker. So I may not be able to test it as I've bricked it. But the actual screen is a lot darker. You can see that straight away. Okay, so if I look closely at this one. And then look closely at this one. See, it's definitely darker. It's still edge to edge, guys. Yeah, this looks like a pure black screen, and you can't see the bezels. Where on this one, you can actually see the bezel going right the way around. That's how I know this one, it's all blacked out. This one, all you can see the bezels around. So, that's how you'll know if you have the new updated screen is that it's all black anyway. Okay, so the buttons are the same. So interestingly, let's see if the battery is a bigger. So this one should be, I think it was only 1900 anyway. Yep, so this one's 19 milliamps. Okay. So let's 
So let's see what the new one is. At least I have a spare battery, eh? <laughs> okay. And there we go. You can see it is a totally different battery. I don't even think this old one will be able to go. So that's how you'll know if you have a new updated version, guys. So as you can see. Two thousand milliamp hours, one thousand nine hundred, and also the actual components itself and the battery itself. I'm not too sure if this is, if I can take this out because it does look like there is a. Oh yes, I can. Okay, so it's a totally different connection in there itself. If you can see that. So let's take out the battery and compare that. So as you can see, the three pins have now been replaced with the connection. Everything else remains the same, just the actual three pin has been taken out. So that's how you know if you have a new unit, guys. Let's pop the battery back in. Let's close the lid. Ooh, wrong lid. Okay, fits quite snug. Let's turn the unit on. Okay, so straight away you can see the colours are so much more vibrant. That's really nice. So I'm not too sure, again, I'm not too sure whether this is the new updated version as in firmware. But we'll test it out and see how we get on. So we have our usual settings, recent, so all the games that you played recently. Favourites, in case you want to do a selection of games that you constantly play. You have the games, which will be the standalone emulators. So we have NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, Wonderswan, Master System, PlayStation, SNES. We have PC Engine, Neo Geo Pocket, Atari 2600, Atari 7800, Main Plus, Main 2010, Final Burn Neo and Arcade. There is a third one and Neo Geo. So these are what you're going to get for the standalone. So let's check a few out and see how well it handles. But the D-pad is really, really good. I will leave a link to the original one uh, in the description, guys. Just so you can check out the first video of the first version. I'm sure they go really, really cheap compared to these newer ones. I think you're going to pay an extra tenner at least. I will leave a link to the new version as well where I got mine. But yeah, it's not too bad. It should come loaded and preloaded with ROMs. Very cheeky, as always. But hey ho, there is a lot of people that cannot add them. So I suppose that's why. So let's click into Famicom. Okay, let's try out the game. Oh, it looks like there's a lot of Japanese games, but they've been translated into English, so that's nice. I'll be checking that out and going through as many as I can. If you want to see a video on that, guys, just let me know in the comments if there's any specific NES games that you wanted to see that were Chinese, but you want to see them translated into English, let me know in the comments. Let's go with Crisis Force.
yeah as you can see guys the viewing angles are so much better than the original one and the colors are so vibrant i don't know if you can see that but it is crystal absolutely crystal the display is gorgeous Now, one thing I'm interested in is whether the bezels are smaller or bigger. To me, the original was smaller than the bezels. I don't know if you can make that out. Not by much, but I'd say a good two to three millimeters maybe on the original. But obviously, I will lose a couple of millimeters to have such a vibrant and amazing screen. That looks fantastic. Okay, so let's have a little test. Look how smooth it is as well, the refresh rate is just silky. Oh, I have missed this handheld. like smups guys I definitely strongly recommend this game it is awesome one of NES's best shooting up so I've ever played so cool and it runs like a dream look at that screen that screen is gorgeous Okay, let's test out a few more. Okay, let's check out the menu options actually. So it does have native menu. So if we click into it, we have usual save state, load state options. Okay, so it's like a bastardized version of RetroArch really. Change the aspect ratio. Well, let's see if it actually works. I remember on the original, the settings didn't work. So let's try pixel perfect. Let's go pixel perfect. See what happens. Let's resume. Still looks pretty amazing either way. Okay, let's try again. Let's see if we can actually change the aspect ratio to something which we can see more clearly. Oh, right, okay. So there's only three options. Let's go eight by seven. No, nope, doesn't seem to have changed. I don't think the settings have changed at all. Okay, let's jump in to. Game Boy. Let's go with Let's go with Amazing Spider-Man, shall we? Ah, okay. So with the standalone emulator, I don't think we'll be able to change the colour gradient, but look at that. Look how sharp that looks. It is so nice. So it is a 2.8 inch screen, guys. IPS fully laminated. And it also has a resolution of 640 by 480. As I say, this is a totally new screen. And I am very impressed with it. But as I say, the bezels are a tiny bit thicker on it. But... No biggie. The good thing about the Mayu Mini though is because the bezels are so small, it really does make the 2.8 inch screen look a lot bigger than what it actually is, and it's such a joy to play. 
But one thing I am noticing is look how smooth the screen is. The refresh rate is just perfect. There's no blaring or ghosting. It is incredibly sharp and smooth. Still spidey. The controls on this unit are absolutely brilliant as well. Okay, so let's check out just a few more and then we'll jump into the retro side uh, of things as well. We have the volume rocker on the left, guys. We have shoulder buttons, L, R, or should I say L and R, R2, L2. It is really, really small, guys, as well. It's really, really small. It's just fun. I absolutely love it. Okay, let's move on to some Game Boy Advance. Let's go with some uh, Sir Alex Ferguson football manager. The speaker's nice, it's not very bassy, but it does the job and it goes quite loud as well. And I'm a big fan of a volume wheel. Okay. Let's go. Oh, look at that screen. It's so smooth. Colors just pop. Yeah, the control's nice, the D-pad is nice. I will turn the brightness down, guys, because I think it's whitewashing out a little bit, so let's exit. Let's go to settings. Let's go to brightness. Let's take it down to a six. Yeah, the good thing about this as well, guys, is you can change the luminosity. You can say change the contrast, saturation, the hue. It's really, really good. You can literally tailor made it, tailor made it to exactly how you want the screen to look, which is very, very rare in a handheld. I think I've never seen it actually apart from this, which is really, really good. So let's quickly just go on to RetroArt side. Let's check out some SNES. Let's go, let's see if we have some Let's see if we got pilot wings It's always a good one to test Nice. 
Okay, so we're running okay. Let's go full dive. Are we going in there? We're in, we're in. 90 points. London was terrible. Close. Okay, so if that's running fine, everything else should be. Let's quickly just check out RetroArch. Okay, so what do we have in the options? It does look like a full list, which is good. Okay, I'm happy with that. What does it say about? Yeah, 1.9.6, okay, quick menu, let's go back, quick record retro art, should take us back to the games, let's try something else, let's go with some Star Fox, if these games run, I'm a happy man. I can notice some crackling of sound there. I will try updating it again, guys. Hopefully, I won't brick this one. So if you want to see a video on the updated firmware, then please consider subscribing. Hitting the bell notification so you don't miss a video. And a like on this video would be truly appreciated. There is some sound crackling. It doesn't definitely not run in full speed, I don't think. I'll test it against the standalone on the way to action. So let's exit out of here. Let's go back from there. Let's go to games. Let's go back to SNES. Oh, I think it was bottom left. Let's go all the way down to Star Fox. between the standalone and also RetroWatch. No sound stuttering. Looks fantastic though guys on this screen. Really nice.
There we go, full speed. So I know it's going to be different on a lot of emulators whether the RetroArch side will run better than the standalones, but normally, in my opinion, standalones run a lot better than RetroArch. But as you can see, it's playing really well and it looks incredible. Really impressive. Okay, let's check out some arcade games. Let's do some CPS3. Let's go with some Red Earth, really tough one to emulate on a lesser powerful handheld. If this works, then amazing. I don't see why not. Love to know what you think of the MyU Mini with the new updated screen, guys. I hope it's coming across just how nice the new screen is. The colours just really pop, really vibing. So far, so good. Oh, no need. Got ya. Stop playing fine, guys. Okay, let's just quickly check out some PS1 games. And then, uh, yeah, I think I'm very impressed. I love this little handheld, guys. If you haven't picked one up already and you get a chance to experience this, I swear you will not regret it. This thing is absolutely awesome. I have I fell in love with the first one. I was gutted that I bricked it when I was trying to update the firmware. But oh, I've missed it, and it was something that I took on the go all the time. It is incredible. Okay, so let's check out some... PS1, so we'll go back. What have we got to showcase? Okay, let's go with Tekken 3. I can't see it being a problem really, to be honest. It looks incredible, look how sharp it is.
So I did notice there was Street Fighter Alpha 2 there, I think. This is a really tough one to emulate on lower-end devices, so if this works, then yeah, I'm definitely going to be super happy. EX2. Okay guys, I'm gonna leave it there. I just wanted to showcase the screen. I think the screen upgrade is definitely worth it. And if we do get up to five to six hours of battery life, then that's even better. Love to know what you think. I will leave a link, as I say, for the first video, the unboxing and first impressions I did of the original, just so you get a chance to see an in-depth of what the ergonomics are, how, it's, how it plays and so forth. But the screen on this is absolutely stunning i really wish uh, it comes well i really hope should i say that it comes across just how nice it actually looks this is a fantastic device and for a cheap handheld this is one of the best that you can certainly get out there i absolutely love it i will leave a link of where i got it from guys it is trusted and yeah i strongly advise you to pick one up as always guys thank you very much for watching i really do appreciate a like and subscribe if you want to see more content on retro gaming handhelds. And as always, take care.